the details of food photography, I need to give you some bad news. There is absolutely nothing I can do to make you a better food photographer. And there's nothing this course can do to make you a better food photographer. Like with all skills in life, food photography comes down to three key principles. Practice, practice, and practice. It really is the starting point and the ending point of becoming a good photographer. This course can help shorten your learning curve, as we'll talk about, but it can't do the hard work for you. So I want you, before we get started, to get into the mindset that you have to practice on a daily basis to get better. And similarly, we're going to talk about something called the 10,000 photo rule, which says that you're going to need to take a lot of photos before you really get comfortable with your skills. Also in this lesson, we're going to have you take your first picture set. Think of it like a before picture set, and then at the end we can take an after picture set to see how much you've grown. So at this point, you don't need a lot of equipment, you don't need a lot of skills, you just want to take some natural photos from wherever you are, and we'll go over how to do that, as well as what equipment you'll need now and in the future for this course. As I already mentioned, there are three steps to becoming a good food photographer. Practice, practice, and finally, you'll need a lot of practice. And here's what I mean by that. This course can't help you take better pictures. It can only help you shorten your learning curve. So when I started out with food photography, I didn't have courses or books. I just picked up a camera and started taking pictures. And they were pretty terrible. And then the next few weeks, they were a little less terrible. And I slowly started acquiring the skills and the, the mindset of a photographer. I would learn how to set up the lighting and learn how to style the food. And it doesn't matter whether you have instructions like this or whether you have a book or whether you have nothing. If you practice, you will get there. So what this course will do for you is it will help shorten your learning curve by showing you specific things to practice. But at the end of the day, the point is that you are the one who has to practice. You're the one who has to put in the effort and the time and the focus to become better and to develop your skill. To drive this point home, I want to introduce something called the 10,000 photo rule. In his book, Outliers, Malcolm Gladwell has this great quote that says, Practice isn't the thing you do once you're good. It's the thing you do that makes you good. And he introduced something called the 10,000 hour rule, which says that a student, in order to become an expert, must practice for 10,000 hours. It doesn't matter whether you want to learn to play the violin or whether you want to be a financial trader on Wall Street. In order to become an expert, you have to practice for 10,000 hours, which is a massive commitment, even a full-time job that's still a decade worth of practice. So I don't want to go that far for this course, but I will say that in order to begin to feel really comfortable with your skills, you're probably going to need to take 10,000 pictures. And if we're talking maybe 50 to 100 photos per photo shoot, which is what is about average for me, that's 100 to 200 photo shoots. Now, this doesn't mean that everything is going to be terrible until 9,999 pictures and then the 10,000th picture is going to be magical and perfect. But you're slowly going to get better over time. And as you get closer to 10,000 pictures, you're going to feel more comfortable with your skills. It's going to seem more natural. And I just want you to get in the mindset that this is a long-term process. And as Gladwell talked about, this only applies to practice that actually stretches your abilities. So don't think you can just stand there with your iPhone shutter and hold it down for 10,000 pictures. You've really got to focus on each one of them in order for it to count. So to put this into practice, I want you to begin today, if you can, and certainly before moving on to the next lesson, to take a before picture set. This will help you measure your starting point, as in like a weight loss journey. You take before pictures, and then you take after pictures. So I'd like you to do the same thing. We can take before pictures here, and then at the end of the course, we can take more and compare them to see how much you've learned. It can be a lot of fun. And it will get you in the habit of practicing. Because if you've got 10,000 pictures to take, you're going to need to work on that every single day. So I want you to get started practicing right now to understand that this is something that becomes part of your life. You, you eat food, and first you take a few pictures of it. And when you get into that habit, you get so much better over the course of a few weeks and a few months. And finally, we're going to do this because it's fun. It's fun to just pull out your camera, 
take a plate of food, and take some pictures of it. In order to do this, you're going to need a few things. And these six items are really the basis of the course. You're not going to need anything outside of this for the rest of the course. And the first one is a camera. This could be a camera phone, like an iPhone. It could be a point-and-shoot camera, or it could be a DSLR. So whatever you have access to for now, just pull it out and use that camera. You'll also need something you certainly have, which is a surface on which to take your pictures. Surfaces do matter quite a bit, and they can change the story you're telling, as we'll see in later lessons. But for now, this can be a tile counter, a granite counter, a tabletop, or even a concrete floor. Something to take your pictures on. And for now, I really want you to get in the habit, even in these early lessons, of learning how to use light to your advantage. A picture is just an exposure of light, and you need good lighting to take good pictures. So if you have a sunlit window, natural light is always better than artificial light. But for now, until we get into later lessons where we discuss lighting, any kind of lighting that lights up your picture and makes it clear and presentable is fine. Fourth, you'll need a plate or a dish or something to put your food on. There's a whole lesson in the styling section on how to choose the right plate for the right food, but for now, just use any dishes you have in your kitchen that you would normally use. You also need, optionally, some accents. These are things like background elements, like food items in the background, or flowers. It includes napkins or placemats, um, utensils like forks and knives, anything that you think might add to the quality of the picture. You can add those into your first pictures here as well. Last but not least, we can't leave out the food. For this, I would prefer if you made something homemade, because it's always nice to take pictures of your own food as opposed to someone else's food. But if it's necessary, you can use takeout or something store-bought. Just make sure it's a fully prepared meal as opposed to just raw ingredients. And throughout the course, those are really the only six things you're going to need. Each one of them will get much more details as we go on. We'll learn how to optimize and use all of them. But for now, just make sure you have access to these things, that you can use them to take your before pictures. And that's really your only homework for this lesson, is to set up your first photo shoot, create a complete dish of food, something homemade or takeout or whatever, put it on a plate, put the plate on the surface, make sure you have good lighting, add any accents you want, and get your shot set up. That's the first step. And the second step is to pull out your camera and take 10 or 15 or 20 photos from different angles. Try it in the front, try flipping the plate around, try taking some overhead shots. Doesn't matter what they look like. Just take some pictures. Later on in the program, we're going to talk about workflow management in terms of how to keep track of your pictures. As you get to hundreds or thousands of pictures, uh, it can be a process to try to keep track of them all and store them appropriately. So there's a whole lesson on that later in the program. But for now, just make a folder on your computer somewhere where these pictures will be safe. You can store these and all subsequent photos we take until we get to the workflow management section. So until the next lesson on telling a compelling story through your pictures, have some fun, take some pictures, and enjoy yourself.